Good morning, everybody. I guess it's good afternoon, everybody. Great to see everybody here and uh, certainly welcome uh, all of our first communicants and their families, both our parishioners and in a special way, all of our guests are here to celebrate this special moment in their lives and in the lives of our parish and our church. So we certainly welcome everybody here today. Uh, just some marching orders before we get started here, some logistical issues to uh, deal with. Um, <clears throat> as part of our diocesan plan to reopen churches to public worship, we have to follow the bishop's guidelines, and those guidelines do require that we observe social distancing from everyone who is not a member of our family. Uh, they do also ask us to wear masks. I see some folks maybe don't have masks. If you are in the church, we ask you to please wear masks. If you don't have masks, we have masks available at the entrance of the church. They're free. Just feel free to take them. Um, as far as communion goes, uh, we do at, we have a special procedure we're going to do for communion, for our first communion. It's going to be one first communicant at a time. Uh, who's starting out, Je Jeannie? Okay, Michael, you're going to start. So when you start, and what will happen is I'll come down off the altar. I'll go to over there to get my hand sanitizer. While I'm doing that, you guys can be getting your hand sanitizer, okay? So when you see me start coming off the altar, you can kind of direct him to just do a little squirt. A little dab will do you, by the way, with the hand sanitizer, okay? We're, we're, that's been an interesting challenge for us here. Of all the many different things I was worried might happen when we restarted masses here, the evaporation time for hand sanitizer was not one that occurred to me. So uh, people have been coming forward for, with, for communion with hand sanitizer still all over their hands. I don't want you to eat hand sanitizer. So uh, please, just a little dab of booyah on your hand, smear it into your hands. That's how you spread it around, okay? You don't need to cover your whole hand and squeeze every ounce you can from the plunger into your hand. Just a little blob, wipe it into your hands with your hands. And then once you're ready, once you've done that, and again, the family can kind of be around there doing that too, you can come forward. I'll be here on the floor. Michael, you'll come forward, and this is for all the first communicants now when they come forward and when it's their turn. So you'll come forward to receive family. We will give the family time to gather around the first communicant. So you can do a sort of semi-circle here in front of the chairs here in this front row so that you can take pictures, et cetera, if you want to of the first communion. Once the child has received first communion, he or she will circle to the sides, depending on which side they're at, to go back to their pews. And then the rest of the family can come forward for communion. And then we'll do that for each First Communion family, okay? So then I would come over here, you guys would go after that. Back over here, you guys would go after that, and so forth, alternating back and forth, right? Yes, okay. Uh, do please, again, observe social distance from non-family members in the communion line. So as, uh, like, other families are coming forward when another family's up here receiving, just please, you'll see the tape on the floor marking off the six-foot distances. We please just ask that you observe that between yourself and the other families. You don't have to worry about that uh, for members of your own family. I think that is all the marching orders we need. Is there anything else you can think of, Mrs. Japel? Mrs. Serka? Mrs. Hodab? Okay. All right, I think we're ready to go then. So be right with you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Normally, as we come into the church, we have a religious practice that we follow of blessing ourselves with holy water. That symbol reminds us of our baptism, which is the way we enter into the life of the church, the way we enter into our life of communion with Christ that we're celebrating here today. And so to recall that image, since we're not allowed to have holy water at our entrances right now, we're going to do what we call the sprinkling rite. We're going to bring the holy water to you and sprinkle you with that holy water to remind us of our baptism that brings us here to the celebration today. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty ever-living God, who willed that through water, the fountain of life and source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water, by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us, and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body, and so approach you with hearts made clean and worthily receive your salvation. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert, so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. 
He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger, and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers, the word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ, the bread that we break? Is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf, the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. 
for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. So who here likes cake? Some people didn't put their hands up. That's pretty impressive. Okay, now they go up. All right. <laughs> Thought it was a trick question. Uh, probably a better question would be who doesn't like cake, right? Everybody loves cake. I love cake too much. That's why I got to stay away from it. But what, where do we find the best cake? Where does the best cake come from? Somebody might say Giant Eagle. Do we have any Giant Eagle cake fans out there? Yeah, we got some, okay. Oh, Tops. Any Tops cake fans out there? No Tops. So, oh, we got one. She likes, she's probably a fan of all cake, I imagine, yeah. But Wegmans, I can only we have some Wegmans fans out there, maybe some other bakeries in the area. But if we really think about it, I think we all know the real answer to that question. Where does the very best cake come from? From God, ultimately, yes, from God, by way of home, right? Homemade cake is always the best. The kind of cake that our parents or our grandparents make. In fact, the best cake I ever had was my grandma's peanut butter cake. It was double layered peanut butter cake, smothered in peanut butter frosting. It was so moist and delicious. It was the best cake I ever had. Now, my grandmother is with God now, has been for many years. And ever since then, other members of my family have tried to make that cake just like grandma used to make it for holiday dinners and so forth. But you know what? While their cakes were good, they just weren't the same. What's the difference? Grandma is the difference. Grandma is the secret ingredient that made her cake so special because she put herself and her love into that cake. And that made all the difference. Now today you're going to receive your first Holy Communion on a feast day we call the Feast of Corpus Christi the body and blood of Christ. And what a perfect day to receive your first communion because we're celebrating today the feast of Christ's body and blood that you're going to receive. And we're going to celebrate that feast with this. This is just plain old ordinary bread. Just like any bread you could buy in a grocery store. Flour, water mixed together, baked in an oven. But when we take this bread and we put it on this altar and we pray over it at Mass today and any time we come to Mass. This bread becomes something so much more. It becomes the body of Christ. What's the difference? Jesus is the difference. He pours himself and his love for us into this bread. So much so that it stops being bread. It becomes Jesus himself. That's why we celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi. That's what you're preparing to receive in First Communion. But we don't just celebrate that. When we come forward, when you come forward today for the first time, and every time we come to this altar to eat the bread that becomes the body of Christ, he comes to us, and he makes us so much more. Jesus comes to us and makes us like himself so that we can go out and bring him to others in our words and actions, by the way we treat one another, by the way we love one another as he loves us. That's why we come here week in, week out, to celebrate the Eucharist, to receive Christ. 
not just so that we can transform this bread into the body of Christ, but so that we can be transformed into the body of Christ. So that we can go out those doors and transform our world into the body of Christ. Jesus is the secret ingredient in our lives when we receive First Communion that makes all the difference. So today as we celebrate this Feast of Corpus Christi and you receive your First Communion, let's celebrate all of that. And as you receive Jesus today for the first time, and for the rest of us here, as we receive Jesus again, hopefully of many times, may we think about what that means and ask God to help us truly become the body of Christ and transform our world to the body of Christ. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathering our prayers together, we offer them to our Heavenly Father, who we know hears us and answers us. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Persico, Father Mark, and all priests, that their service will help people experience communion with God and others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government leaders, that God will give them wisdom to address the unrest in words that will unite society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children receiving First Communion today, that they may take on the mind and heart of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering from natural disasters, that God will nurture them and supply the assistance they need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have experienced violence, that God will protect them from further harm and give them hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill and those who care for them, that God will send them healing, strength, and wisdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the people that have broken limbs or diseases, we pray in the name of God. Lord, hear our prayer. For my pap, Donald Campbell, that he will get better and be able to come home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, giver of all gifts, we thank you in a special way today for the greatest gift of all, the gift of your son, Jesus. We ask you to help us open our hearts and minds to receive him in communion, to be transformed by that experience, and to go out and bring him to the world. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. And we believe. 
brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. O Lord, be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Boniface, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Lawrence our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I leave you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Again, just a reminder of the procedure for communion today, we will receive by family. So beginning here, uh, the first family will come forward, receive communion, then the second family and so forth, alternating uh, back down through the pews. And please again, do use the hand sanitizer before you approach the altar for communion. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Certainly want to thank everybody again for coming out today. Uh, above all, certainly want to thank our first communicants for coming to the Lord for the first time. I think they deserve a round of applause for doing a great job. <laughs> Uh, I know you got a bag full of goodies from various people and things. Do we want to identify where all that stuff's from, or is it identified in the bag where it's from? Or? Okay, so Mrs. Style, Mrs. Ruth Styles, I believe, put a garment, like a prayer shawl in there for them. There's also a gift from the Knights of Columbus in there uh, for First Communicants. Anything else in the bags? Oh, Mrs. Cernick, what did you put in the bags, Mrs. A coloring book. Oh, nice. You can play around during your party today. All right. And, uh, please remember your banners. And on the way out, our tickets and some bags. And with the rosary. Oh, and Mrs. Styles made the mask as well. So they're very good. Mrs. Styles has been busy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, well, certainly we want to thank Mrs. Abel and Mrs. Cernka for their hard work, uh, really dealing with adverse circumstances like everybody else, trying to do their best to help your children, as you have done, get ready for First Communion. So we certainly want to thank them for their hard work. First, want to thank Mrs. Hodap for the music. Always does a great job. She's putting in overtime for this today, so thank her for that. I want to thank Mr. Yep. I want to thank uh, Mr. Gene Kahn, who's up in the, the choir loft up there. He's been the videographer, so uh, I, I imagine we'll be up on the website at some point. So if you'd like to take a look at the video or, or download the video or whatever, you should be able to, to do that. <coughs> Certainly want to thank our liturgical ministers. I want to thank Mallory for reading. Did a great job. She gets taller every time I see her. I can't believe how tall she is. <laughs> and then we want to thank our wounded warrior, Lily, up here, who broke her arm just yesterday and yet still wanted to come and serve mass today. So we thank Lily for putting in the effort here. Uh, I will be around as I'm sure Mrs. Yapel and Mrs. Cernka will be around after mass. If you would like pictures, after mass will be available. So as long as it takes for people to get the pictures they would like. Uh, we may have to be creative how we do that since we're, well, if we do it in the sanctuary, we should be okay to take mass off, but we'll make it work. Yeah, we're outside. We'll make it work. So the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. <laughs>